been called from uh, Cyber. Uh, so he will be talking about the Lova approach in API security. So maybe some new way how to uh, better manage the API securities. So, um, okay, so are you ready? Yes. Hi, <clears throat> Hi, Patrick. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So your your voice is loud and clear. So uh, maybe you can try to share the screen and then okay. Yeah, I can see that. So let me pass the time to you. Um. Okay. So see you soon. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, <clears throat> it's my pleasure to be here on uh, API Days. Uh, I guess for most of you, I should say good afternoon. Uh, here in Israel, it's still morning. And uh, <clears throat> I would like to. Uh, address my talk and uh, lead you a little bit about uh, API security in general. And I, I guess for most of you, it's maybe uh, your first steps uh, when talking about API security. And uh, I would like to share from my experience, uh, first of all, uh, give you a little bit of uh, motivation. <clears throat> what are the problems? What are the, uh, the issues that you should consider? Uh, then uh, talking a little, bit, a little bit about the landscape of, uh, of current solutions, moving on to the uh, highlight of my presentation about what are the novel approaches and uh, what's the importance uh, of them. But uh, <clears throat> let me start with uh, some words about myself. Uh, hopefully it will give some of you some uh, motivation to, uh, to keep along with uh, my presentation. So uh, I'm a graduate of uh, an elite uh, IDF uh, program that is called Talpiot. Uh, my uh, last position was the city of Israel National Cyber Directorate. That's a government entity responsible to protect the whole civilian uh, and federal sectors of the state of Israel, reporting right to the prime minister. <clears throat> Before that, I spent uh, almost 20 years in the security forces doing all kinds of cybersecurity uh, that you can imagine, uh, but I cannot speak about. Uh, but I think that this is what uh, gave me a lot of the perspective that uh, I would like to share with you. Somehow throughout my career, I also managed to do PhD in machine learning, uh, and I'm trying to use that when coming to uh, solve some of the API security problems. So API protection uh, is a major issue. <clears throat> For those of you who are not convinced yet, let me share some, uh, some facts. So uh, three years ago, it were, the API economy was already estimated by uh, more than $2 trillion. Uh, this means that, uh, <clears throat> like the famous saying uh, about bank robbers, uh, that say uh, they rob banks because this is where the money uh, in this case, the money moves to the digital economy. There is a lot of money in APIs, so a lot of bad guys are after you. <clears throat> but it's not only about uh, bad guys. It's actually uh, the whole volume uh, that we see is moving from normal HTML traffic to the API uh, communication. And Gartner predicts that uh, next year, 50% of web attacks are going to be through APIs. But then again, I, I, I want to emphasize a very important thing that uh, I will lead you through my presentation. Malicious actors are one very important, very significant threat, but we can see that there are many other incidents that APIs are involved. Some of them are not actually malicious attacks. I think the most famous one uh, is about uh, the interaction between Cambridge Analytica and Facebook, uh, in which via APIs, uh, Cambridge Analytica actually stole all Facebook graph. They didn't commit any attack. They didn't uh, <clears throat> exploit any vulnerability. They were a legitimate user that misbehaved. And I will emphasize that. In my view, I call APIs, the API architecture, insecurity by design. Actually, the opposite of what we expect from any uh, new system that we would like to see secured by design in APIs, the nature of the APIs actually make them the, something that is probably 
the most similar to what you would imagine as insecurity. And why is that? First of all, it's what I call the open architecture. APIs are the nightmare <clears throat> of uh, security people. In APIs, we actually create like a highway from anywhere in the world to the crown jewels of our data <clears throat> because it's great for the business, because this is how we make revenues. But from a security perspective, the fact that it's only one bit that can distinguish and differentiate between a legitimate use, something that supports the business, and a catastrophe that someone is able to extract all your data, it's, a, it's really a problem. Next, I think that throughout this uh, <clears throat> conference, we were talking so much about the importance, about the advantages, about the high development that we want to see in APIs. And this is really in practice what happens. There is the APIs are being developed in the most agile manner. But then again, from the security perspective, it means that there is no way one can actually avoid misconfigurations. One can actually avoid vulnerabilities um, <clears throat> and all kinds of problems that are caused by your own developers because they are running uh, in high pace in order to install the next versions. Um, one not so large Israeli company once shared with me that they are updating their APIs on an hourly basis. There is no way one can do any kind of uh, <clears throat> reasonable QA, not to talk about all the other security tests that I would like to see before installing a version. This means that this really the, the vulnerabilities are actually in there. I think uh, uh, my former, uh, <clears throat> the former speaker really uh, mentioned that a lot. So many stakeholders, uh, your API is not an atomic kind of uh, software. You have many developers, many third parties uh, that contribute to your APIs. And this makes it also, uh, again, inevitable to, to have a lot of uh, <clears throat> vulnerabilities inside. And the last thing that I think distinguishes APIs from most of the other IT systems that we, uh, we usually have to secure is the fact that the users of these systems are not the employees, are not the contractors of your organization. Most of the times the users are any customer of your company that is out there that you want to provide them with the best experience, meaning less security measures because uh, let's admit security is not something that uh, we like from a user experience perspective. And this means that you're actually giving people that you don't really know access to your data and you actually trust them, although in reality, you, you can't. Going back to, the, uh, to Facebook and Cambridge Analytica. What are the concerns that for those of you who are actually starting to think and doing their first steps in APIs that you should really uh, consider? <clears throat> the first and very basic one uh, actually may sound trivial, to some of you, but there is a common understanding that this is a real problem, an unsolved problem for, for most API providers is, um, are there APIs that my organization is exposing and I'm not aware of? Security people live in the dark. Security people <clears throat> lack the tools, lack the framework to really be sure that they are aware of which services are actually exposed to the world. <clears throat> Even if you're using an API gateway, uh, in most of the times, because this is a domain of developers, 
uh, security people find out that there are deprecated APIs, there are hidden APIs, there are servers they were not aware of that don't really <clears throat> go through your API gateway, and they feel uh, blind. Then, in many APIs, there are personal information that is involved. So we really need to know because even if we're talking about open banking and other kind of regulations that force us to open up, there are still always the privacy regulations that, God forbid, what happens to, uh, to our business if personal information is going to leak. This is very uh, critical when you talk about banking, open banking, and other uh, financial um, APIs. This is so critical when it comes to healthcare APIs. And now with all the general privacy regulations uh, like GDPR and <clears throat> other local ones, this is very critical to you. Next, we are in, in, in some cases, we're talking about, especially when we talk about uh, B2B uh, scenarios, we want to know who is using our APIs. And here is a story, a real one. Um, a CISO of um, <clears throat> a very uh, successful, growing um, company that offers, really is based on uh, APIs for the business, uh, took into position and he asked everybody around in the company, the CFO and others, how many third parties are accessing our APIs? CFO looks and, uh, and tells him, well, we signed contracts with four third parties. This CISO was not lazy and he actually, he built some kind of uh, framework and he captures the communication and you can imagine how surprised he was realizing that not four external parties are accessing his API, not even 40, but close to 400. And I think this is not a coincidence. This is something that happens all around. We don't really know who is using our API. And of course, the, <clears throat> the bottom line, for those legitimate users, we want to realize that they are using our API in an authorized and reasonable manner. Sometimes they are authorized, but they, we never expect them to use the API as, as they do, and we want to uh, handle it. We want to uh, <clears throat> avoid it. So to summarize about what are the threats, what are the main risks that you are facing, and this is very important because then again, most of the people would say that they are uh, <clears throat> threatened by hacking, by malicious actors attacking the APIs. But this is only one part of the equation. This is only uh, partially uh, part of the risk. There are many other risks that are about abuse. Your own customers, your legitimate customers with valid credentials that abuse the privilege, access data that you didn't intend to, grab uh, capacity, a lot of information that you never uh, designed the system to, to support that. And this is a little bit more than classic security. Many people categorize this as a revenue assurance risk. But then again, it's a risk for the business from your API that is coming from the technical part. And, and the third part of the equation is data leaks. Sometimes misconfigurations by your own people cause data to leak. And in APIs, for those of you who are familiar a little bit with data prevention techniques in other areas, in APIs, we do have the potential to <clears throat> prevent that. Because APIs prevent some kind of a context that sometimes is not available in, uh, in emails, for example, and other web applications, in APIs, we do have the way to identify that and prevent it. 
So when you're coming to design, when you're coming to <clears throat> uh, look for API security measure, I would uh, suggest taking into account the following requirements. Generally speaking, you must have a discovery uh, feature. You must be able to realize and to get the system to build a catalog of which services are open, who are the users that are accessing them, and, and so on and so forth. Then you would like to have an anomaly detection. <clears throat> Again, even if there is a legitimate access for authorized, authenticated users, you want to see if, this, uh, if there is some anomaly in the way they consume the API, they access the API. Closing the loop requires that you have some investigation capabilities. Once there is some abnormal call, there is some user that misbehaves, you want to go and see uh, why did the system uh, came to that conclusion. And obviously, remediation. Some of the remediation could be blocking an IP address, a user. Some could be uh, <clears throat> communicating with the business. Maybe we, if we spoke about revenue assurance, maybe we need to charge this user a different price, etc. From a technical pro uh, point of view, uh, I would recommend to go for an agentless kind of solution uh, um, <clears throat> that you don't need to install on every machine that runs part of your API system. Uh, most organizations should be uh, sensitive to the fact that they are hybrid, so they need a solution that supports both on-prem and in the cloud. Obviously, security needs to support the business, so it cannot slow down the API communication. It needs to be transparent with no performance penalties. And as we spoke, many of you uh, must uh, validate that it's compliant with all kinds of regulations, especially privacy regulations. Take, for example, some of the solutions that require you to send away all your API communication to be analyzed in the cloud. Uh, some of you cannot live with this kind of a solution. Uh, and the last one, trying to be as general as, uh, as we want still, uh, in the next step, after you do your first step uh, in API security, you would like to see something that can understand and adjust itself to your business logic, something that can live with a specific kind of API uh, security requirements. Um, <clears throat> let me fast forward a little bit uh, to make it to, um, <clears throat> to the novel approaches that I want to uh, present. Uh, there is a, a large spectrum of API security solutions. We kind of uh, categorize them uh, if they support the development, kind of API collaboration tools, tools that uh, helps you validate that uh, your API that is installed is consistent with your Swagger files, etc. Then there are some that we call runtime application self-protection, pieces of codes that you compile with your API uh, <clears throat> services that help you monitor what is what happens there, and some API bus bridge and attack simulation, like taking the pen testing that we know from other fields of security and embedding them into API specific uh, tests to uh, detect vulnerabilities uh, in your installed code. One word about classic WAF and API gateways. It is believed that these are only a very basic tools that uh, one can use. WAFs are rule-based. Still, they are rule-based. It means that you need to uh, <clears throat> update them on continuous basis. It cannot live in, a, in an agile API domain. And API gateways don't see all the communication on the one hand and are not built uh, for specific security. And this leads me to the novel approach I want to share with you, which I call deep message inspection. In deep message inspections, we're talking about tools that act like API sniffers. 
they inspect all the API communication and specifically get to the bottom of your payload. <clears throat> they have the capacity to do multi-level profiling. It means that they understand what's the normal behavior for every user interacting with every endpoint that you expose. Because of the criticality of the personal information, we want to see that PIIs can be detected and associated with the right users to, again, to find out the most critical threat that you can have, that personal information is leaked or is being exfiltrated to the wrong source. And we need to see how it behaves along the time. We need to see correlation between different calls and something like a time series of behavior. We want to follow sessions. We want to follow users, how they <clears throat> develop, how they change their behavior along the time. The importance of deep message inspection cannot be uh, really uh, questioned about. The fact that we need to discover all uh, APIs that are exposed, the fact that we need to build the catalog of your APIs, because this is how we build the trust between the developers, the business people that push forward to open as many APIs as possible because it creates revenues to the security people that now don't feel blind. Now they know what happens there. They know that developers are embedding the security requirements and they can really control it 24-7. Uh, we can detect leakage of PIIs. <clears throat> we can offer uh, compliance validation uh, with all kinds of privacy and non-privacy uh, regulations. It can detect when you actually, you're not consistent with your swagger and other uh, definitions. And the fact that we capture all the API sessions, we <clears throat> monitor deep inside the messages, can we re reduce our false alerts, can really help us discover issues that are not only malicious attacks, but actually some misbehaving users and some uh, leakages. I don't think I have more time, so uh, let me just share my contact details uh, here. I'll be more than happy to continue the conversation uh, with anyone who is interested, uh, and I leave little time uh, for questions. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Tom. So, uh, yeah, we have a very first row, um, uh sharing here. So um, I think you, you mentioned quite a bit on the, the modern API securities and the traditional security. So I just checked the audience. So uh, what, do you, what do you think when you first come to those um, uh, traditional company, what's the major difficulty of maybe the first point that you want to tell them? Okay, what, uh, what is the, the, the low 40 point and then what is the, the major uh, 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 challenges they need to adjust first. Do you have one or two uh, major differences want to highlight from the traditional and the low far approach? Yes. I think the first step and the basic step, and this is not only me saying, but also I heard it from uh, customers, it's the discovery. It's the fact that mm -hmm. you want to open your eyes, you want to, to monitor the communication, and you want to realize what is your API posture? All the services that are exposed, the users, etc. Then the next challenge is coming up with the anomaly detection that really suits you because security people realize that if you, you I can bring you the most sophisticated tool. If you don't know how to use it, if it um, mm. show really <clears throat> Uh, outrages you with too many alerts, this is useless. So we need to come up with alerting only on the critical issues that really uh, endanger your business. Many APIs share public information, so they are not threatened by someone accessing this information. They are threatened by maybe sometimes the focused personal information that they have or by someone really breaching and grabbing all their data. 
And this is what I think are the okay. challenges to reach yeah, yeah, out. Yeah. So yeah, thank you. So um, yeah, I think uh, if the, the, the audience want to for, uh, follow further, so feel free to uh, reach out to, uh, offline. So uh, there should be a lot uh, to talk about. So uh, thanks again, Tor. So uh, goodbye, and then we will uh, come to the bye next bye section. Everyone. Happy to continue. Thank the you. Conference.